Hello and welcome to this video on producing high alcohol homebrew. For a long time, 12 to 14 percent alcohol by volume was considered the upper limit of brewing, especially for beer and cider. This was until 1968. Modern industrial production can produce alcohol by volume of 21 to 25 percent reliably and on an industrial scale. Home brewers can achieve better results. A high alcohol brew is both an ambitious goal and one that is largely unnecessary for the home brewer. However, it is an interesting insight for those following the Brewdog and Schorschbrau war over who can produce the most alcoholic beer. Some may dislike the challenge, or be technically inclined to experiment from this information. There are many barriers to a high alcohol brew. These include the sugar substrate used, osmotic pressure, ethanol concentrations, yeast strains, temperature, pH, and time. Alcohol is a direct product of the non-aerobic fermentation of sugar to produce such a high alcohol by volume brew. The original batch must contain an extra amount of sugar. This is unlike normal beer or spirits, which are nearly all grain derived. Although sugar should be your primary addition, other types of fermentables should be included. This is called high gravity brewing, high gravity brewing being the intention of creating an initial wash with a very high specific gravity in order to create a high alcohol content. The addition of these sugars should include mostly more complex or varied sugar substrates. There is a bottleneck to how much of these fermentables that can be processed per unit of time in this wash. So this process produces a high alcohol by volume at the expense of efficiency. Finally, not all sugars are equal. In order of complexity, Yeast will generally utilize the least complex and most accessible sugars first, working their way through the more complex sugars, going from simple glucose to maltose to more complex chains of sugars. And in doing so, it will break these down over time. As a result, simple sugars are best for creating a high alcohol brew. The next factor to consider in high alcohol brewing is osmotic pressure. This is the difference in solute concentration between two regions separated by a semi-permeable barrier, such as a yeast cell wall. The best example of this is sodium and water. The amount of water will follow the sodium gradient. In the case of brewing yeast, it is the combination of solutes in the brewing wash, and the amount of water in both the yeast cell and the brew wash. The osmotic pressures, like those in high gravity washes, can distort yeast metabolism, it may even cause the yeast cell to lyse. The osmotic pressure placed on the yeast will affect the physiology until the end of the fermentation. To keep the osmotic pressure low, keep an initial specific gravity in the range of 1.1 to 1.11. Keep adding adjuncts gradually during fermentation, daily or more frequently in smaller amounts. Adding yeast nutrient concurrently. As a general term, the adjuncts will include sugar substrates. Before you even get to this stage of adding yeast substrates, Steps need to be taken to address the osmotic pressure. The first of these is the use of a yeast starter. This has several benefits. The first being the large growth of the yeast population. This maximizes the number of cells in the wash and the probability that a large number will survive the shock of transfer into the wash. By moving from one liquid environment into another, it also reduces the difference in osmotic pressure. By creating a starter that matches your targeted and specific gravity in the wash, the osmotic shock is largely mitigated. This also reduces the lag time for brewing. This leaves other factors to reduce the alcohol by volume. The ideal range for pitching is between 0.75 and 1.5 million yeast cells a milliliter of brew, although this range can and should ideally be extended for high alcohol brews. The other side of this problem is the need to balance the sugar concentration against the osmotic pressure it has created. Adding yeast to a high sugar environment yields a higher initial gravity. Initial gravity above 1.2 will kill yeast at a very early stage in the fermentation. This is largely counted by the substrate selectivity mentioned previously and the addition of small quantities over extended periods. Next is the selection of yeast. Rather obviously, brewers need to use a yeast strain that has a high alcohol tolerance and that is very attenuative. Attenuation in its simplest terms being conversion of sugar to alcohol. The home brewer should not dump everything into the brew at one time, instead aiming for 15 to 20 million cells per milliliter, 10 times that of a standard brew. Better yet, aim to introduce successive allotments of yeast over the course of the fermentation. 
some strains of yeast can be used in this particular role due to the claimed high tolerance for alcohol. Examples of this include the White Labs WLP-099 High Gravity Ale Yeast, which is supposed to ferment up to 25% alcohol by volume. Alternatively, the use of a champagne yeast strain has been shown to work. The next consideration is temperature. To achieve a high alcohol by volume, the brew needs to begin at a low temperature, then rise slightly and stabilise. Towards the tail end, it needs to increase incrementally. Regardless of what the yeast manufacturer suggests, starting with a fermentation temperature between 17 and 18 degrees centigrade is best. This is the low end of an ale yeast temperature and well below that of a normal fermentation. By keeping a stable and low temperature, it minimizes the amount of yeast which drops out of suspension. Further, it slows down the metabolism. Slower metabolism means more time for the yeast cells to adjust to changing conditions. As time proceeds, the increasing yeast population and metabolism will raise the fermentation temperature. This can be by as much as 5 degrees centigrade. pH is another factor to consider. Using brewing salts will assure the pH washes between 5 and 5.3 on the pH scale. With aeration and the addition of nutrients, it should remain in this range during fermentation. As it nears completion, the amount of ethanol produced will simply outrun the need or effect of adding more salts. And so, towards the end of the run, the pH will drop no matter what is done to counteract it. Oxygenation is the next step for the home brewer, though this deserves its own video in the future. The simplified version essentially increases the available resources for metabolism and use proliferation by slightly agitating the brew throughout its fermentation. The final factor that applies to high alcohol home brewing is time. There are several reasons why a high alcohol brew will take longer. The first is rather obviously the slow metabolism. There is more sugar to work through when it has a slow metabolism. Although there is a lot more yeast, working away at converting sugar to alcohol, there is a lot more sugar to convert as well, and so the whole process is subject to both a degree of competition and environmental pressures. These slow down the fermentation process. Couple this with the interruption from adding new yeast, the oxygenation from doing so, and the pH movement, the yeast will take longer to ferment through the wash. In the case of beer and spirit type washes, this will include a large amount of complex sugars that need to be broken down to access the simple sugars for fermentation. This adds to the fermentation time considerably. Some final caveats need to be stated. The first is that a higher alcohol brew will likely have a high concomitant inclusion of fusel alcohols and undesirable alcohols like methanol. The second is that it is a risk or reward proposition. If the wash fails, it will be a waste and probably not able to be recovered. If it works well, it works very well. This means a higher alcohol brew is both a risky proposition but a rewarding one if it works. Hopefully this information has proven helpful to understand what is needed to produce a high alcohol home brew. Although it does not produce a moonshine wash or an ethanol wash, it does create a high alcohol beer or cider type brew. Thank you for watching this video and please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.